Welcome along, fellow time travelers and strange historians. This time around, we're going to travel back in time to do a photo analysis of the west side of the Dakota apartment building in 1885. Before I begin, please like and share the show and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now let's start our photo analysis. This photo was taken by a photographer on West 72nd Street in the late 1800s. Horse-drawn carriages and carts can be seen along West 72nd Street that was clearly not yet paved. Taking a look at the bedrock and debris, it is even more astonishing how much was created and accomplished by incredibly hard-working and talented New Yorkers at the time. As you can see, the land to the west of the Dakota was not yet developed, though the land next to the Dakota was associated with the building and was referred to as Clark Park. Even though Central Park was right across the street on the east side, the private park was for the exclusive use of Dakota residents, and also residents of the row houses built along West 73rd Street that was also owned by Edward C. Clark, and also designed by Henry Janeway Hardenberg, who designed the Dakota. Grass-covered lawns can be seen on both sides. This space has been used for lawn tennis and croquet. In the center of Clark Park can be seen skylights to allow sunlight to enter into the chambers below where there was built a power plant to generate electricity for the Dakota and surrounding neighborhood. When one considers that electricity was relatively new at the time, and that at that time Thomas Edison was installing it in downtown Manhattan, it is absolutely incredible that a private power plant was built up here for this exclusive purpose. Seriously, this was a big deal. The Dakota was built between 1880 and 1884, and it was on September 4th of 1882 that the Electric Age began, because that was the day that Thomas Edison's Edison Illuminating Company flipped the switch on his power station in Lower Manhattan. So, as if the history of the Dakota wasn't fascinating enough, we now have this incredible fact to associate with it all. Now look, this is clearly an old photograph of the west side of the Dakota, but there's still so much to discuss. For starters, it is clearly not anywhere near as attractive as the other sides of the building. That is because this is considered to be the back of the building, which seems unusual in some ways, because the front of the building is actually considered to be the south side, since that is where the entryway is. So, as you can see, there is no terracotta frieze along the second floor. The windows along the second floor are not round-headed. And there is no ornate iron railing along the seventh floor. One might wonder why it was not made more ornate, because even though the back of most other buildings in large cities like New York would be so close to the next building over, the Clark family owned the property to the west, and it was facing a private park. So it seems like it should have been as ornate as the other sides. But not only was that not the case, but they didn't even use the same yellow brick on the west side. They actually used the same sort of red brick, which was much less expensive, by the way, as was used on other buildings at the time. Along the ground floor can be seen some window awnings. In fact, while we're here, let's go ahead and count the floor level, shall we? Here. We've got the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. And the copper door windows of the 8th and 9th floor can be seen in the attic. And there are 4 gables up at the attic level with sets of windows on the 7th and 8th floors. And at the very top of the gables can be seen a window of what is actually a 10th floor. It cannot be seen here, but along the west side was built a narrow driveway for horse-drawn carriages to be able to access the delivery entryway. The doors are very wide, and it's been said that the carriages would enter into the basement, which was designed to have an area as large as the courtyard above in order for the horse-drawn carriages to be able to turn around. Eventually, buildings would be built along the west side of the Dakota, and the property that was Clark Park was sold by the co-op board in order to help pay for the process of the conversion around 1959. And at that point, Clark Park became a parking lot. And so that was the sad end of the residents on the west side of the building having any kind of attractive views. Interestingly, the apartments in the upper levels actually had a view in the early days of the Hudson River and even New Jersey. And this could be seen in photos taken from the Dakota's roof in the late 1800s. As you can see from this angle, the Dakota had numerous chimneys. And you can see two of the ornate stone finials atop the gables. And so this concludes this photo analysis of the west side of the Dakota's courtyard. 
If you want to learn more about the incredible architecture, design, and history of the beautiful Dakota apartment building, please check out my books on Amazon or any other places where you buy books. If you have any thoughts about the subject matter, please put those in the comments below and share what's on your mind. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I do look forward to you joining me again for another photo analysis video. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe and hit the notification bell because there will be more shows like this one and I hope you check those out too. Please check out the links below so you can learn how to support my research and productions. I'd appreciate it if you could become a member of my channel and or join me on Patreon. You can also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Kindly be kind to all non-human animals and please don't eat them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, brilliant people throughout history chose a plant-based diet. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.